During my weekly Shabbat service, I constantly tell you guys that God defines what wickedness is for us in Scripture and that this is information you really need to know. You have to know how God sees wickedness so that you can avoid it. Just in case you haven't done that study on your own, let's do it right now. And on a side note, if you're not joining us on our weekly Shabbat services, you should. They're 3 p.m. Central Time every Shabbat, and then they're restreamed on my YouTube channel, Sheepdog Ministries. But let's jump right into it, shall we? Genesis 6, And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You know how all you guys say, oh, he knows my heart, and you use that to justify breaking his commandments? Maybe that's not going to work out so well for you. Genesis 13, now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. Now I can't tell you what made them great sinners against the Lord and what made them wicked without this video getting taken down by TikTok and YouTube. So why don't you go read Genesis chapter 19 and find out for yourself. Spoiler alert, the world is celebrating it right now. Even Christians are saying that it's okay to do. And the Old and New Testament clearly tell you that doing the things that the men of Sodom did will keep you out of the kingdom of God. Exodus 23, you shall not spread a false report and you shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. You shall not fall in with the many to do evil, nor shall you bear witness in a lawsuit siding with the many so as to pervert justice. So God thinks it's wicked when you bear false witness, almost as if he told us not to do that in his commandments. He also says it's wicked to be like everybody else just because everybody else likes it. The majority of people will not serve God according to the Bible. So you can either choose to side with them or choose to side with your creator choice is yours, but if you side with them, it's wicked. Just a little further down, God says this, For keep from a false charge, and do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not acquit the wicked. And I have other videos about this, but Scripture, Old and New Testament, only define righteousness as being obedient to God and following His commandments. So when you hate on righteous people, it's wicked, and you won't be acquitted, according to the Bible. In Deuteronomy 13, God said, All Israel shall hear and fear and never do any such wickedness as this among you. If you read a little higher above this, he's referencing this. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and serve him and hold fast to him. If you do not do these things, it's considered wickedness. Nehemiah chapter 9, our kings, our princes, our priests, and our fathers have not kept your law or paid attention to your commandments and your warnings that you gave them. Even in their own kingdom and amid your great goodness that you gave them, and in a large and rich land that you set before them, they did not serve you or turn from their wicked works. Again, this is clearly showing us that wickedness is associated with not obeying God or heeding the warnings that he gave us in the scriptures. Psalm 1, blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So, being wicked, being a sinner, and being a scoffer are all associated with disregarding the laws of God. Psalm chapter 9, you have rebuked the nations, you have made the wicked perish, you have blotted out their name forever and ever. So we definitely don't want to be like the rest of the nations. And the book of life clearly has an eraser, even Jesus says it in Revelation. The Lord has made himself known, he has executed judgment, the wicked are snared in the works of their own hands. And make no mistake, this has nothing to do with keeping the commandments of the Torah or walking in the footsteps of Messiah Yeshua. This is actually the opposite of keeping God's commandments. The wicked shall return to Sheol, all the nations that forgot God. How do you forget God? Mm, probably by doing nothing that he asked you to do. Psalm 10, for the wicked boasts of the desires of his soul, and the one greedy for gain curses and renounces the Lord. Psalm 11, the Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the ones who love violence. 
Psalm 18, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his rules were before me and his statutes I did not put away from me. Psalm 106, both we and our fathers have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedness. I really hope you guys are starting to see this reoccurring pattern and theme. Psalm 119, salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Proverbs 3, the Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Remember that curse Paul's always talking about? It's this one. The curse of the law is not doing it. Deuteronomy 11, I'm setting before you a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, and the curse if you do not obey the commandments of your God. Make sure you know what the Old Testament says before you go reading Paul's letters. You might twist his words to lawlessness. Isaiah 13, I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity, their lawlessness. I will put an end to the pomp of the arrogant and lay down low the pompous pride of the ruthless. Isaiah 26, but when grace is shown to the wicked, they do not learn righteousness. Even in a land of uprightness, they go on doing evil, and they do not regard the majesty of the Lord. Ezekiel 18, the soul who sins shall die. The son shall not suffer for the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But if a wicked person turns away from all his sins that he has committed and keeps all my statutes and does what is just and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of the transgressions he has committed shall be remembered against him. For the righteousness that he has done, he shall live. If anyone has actually watched to this point and doesn't agree, I know what they're thinking. Oh, this is all Old Testament. God changed his mind in the New Covenant about that. Numbers 23, God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said and he will not do or has he spoken and will not fulfill? Malachi 3, for I the Lord do not change. You really need to understand the Old Testament before you even try to read the New Testament. Because God didn't lie about anything he said in the beginning of the book. And all these unbiblical excuses like dispensations and God changing his mind and God dealing differently with different people, completely unbiblical in every single way, Old and New Testament. So let's see what the New Testament says about wickedness. Mark 7, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come within and they defile a person. Luke 5.32, Jesus says, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners, the wicked, to repentance. John 3, for everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. Acts 8, repent therefore of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible the intent of your heart may be forgiven. James 1, therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Second John, everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ, which is the Torah, by the way, does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting, for whoever greets him takes part in his wickedness. Accepting these false teachings that tells you you don't need to keep the commandments of God anymore is partaking in wickedness. And the New Testament does not redefine what the word wickedness means. The ESV translation references the word wicked or wickedness 363 times in the Old and New Testament. There's over 300 examples of what wicked people were doing. In every single one of them, they weren't obeying God or his commandments. But you don't got to take my word for it. I encourage you to read it for yourself. 
Second Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and forgive their sins.